Yeah, look, that, that's Dave King. The, the Dave King circus is 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 rolling again. Um, I I would imagine that a lot of Rangers fans are, are are tired of it. I would imagine that you know there will be some out there that that will look back and think ah fifty five and Stephen Gerrard and Dave. King. I think most sensible Rangers fans will have moved on from that. Um, I think he's a, a he's he's a distraction. Uh, I think if he was wanting to have a serious conversation about becoming chairman, that he wouldn't be having it through the media. Um, but he can't have this conversation with the board because the board are hostile towards him mm -hmm. um, because of his previous behaviour, because of their previous behaviour, because they're just like rats fighting in a sack. Um, so there is absolutely zero chance that the Rangers board are going to say, ah, Dave, and you come, especially, I don't know if you, if you listen, I, I heard some of his radio stuff today, He's basically saying they're all hopeless, they're all clueless, no. and if he came in, he'd need to tick them all to it. So, I mean, yes, does it make a good headline? Yes, will Rangers fans be interested in hearing from Dave King? I, I imagine so, um, but I think that I think the vast majority have probably got Dave King fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the hubristic tone. I mean, today he was saying, you know, in his, his radio interview. What's really the the biggest thing that's worrying him right now? Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, but I won't. But the biggest thing that's worrying him right now appears to be the thought that Celtic might overtake Rangers in terms of trophies won um, historically. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you should be worried about that, Dave. No. Just take that as read. By the end of the season, that's exactly what's going to happen. And we were saying before we went on air, if you really are getting caught up in that, it's already 180 But weeks. see all this stuff, but see, yeah, yeah, we'll go through the numbers, Aye. right? But my point is this, my point is he's trying to appeal to, to this cross-section, this, he wants to, almost by, he thinks by coming across as obsessing about Celtic, that he'll bring the public with him. That's what the Rangers fans want. Mm. Well, actually not, Dave. What Rangers fans want is a club being run properly, professionally, without all the psychodrama that you brought to it when you were here last time round. Um, don't forget, he headed for the hills. He washed his hands of the thing and he ran. Mm -hmm. um, and now all of a sudden, he's the best man for the job. No, I, I, I could do without hearing that. I'm sure there's a lot of Rangers fans could do without hearing that. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting. I just find it a bit... I just find him now... A bit boring. Mm -hmm. I find that his hubristic chat, everything you, you, everything that comes out of his mouth, you think, I've heard all this before, and it's all the same, and it's all the same angry, aggressive stuff. Um, and I think Rangers should be bigger and better than that. And, and in fact, that's the one thing I'd say. I wrote a column about it today, and I feel real sympathy for, for John Bennett, uh, that he's now in this situation mm -hmm. where doctors are telling him, advising him that he has to walk away from this for the sake of his health. That is a, a, a really sad indictment of the, the situation. I feel so sorry for him because he was full of best intentions. Yeah. Uh, so much so that he was prepared to, to, to part something like £23 million of his own money into Rangers to try and help them through. The, the guy just wanted to do his best and it's turned out horribly. And that must have been taking a hell of a, a, a stress and strain on him. And what he was doing behind the scenes, and this is what a lot of the fans won't see, what, what John Bennett was doing behind the scenes, he was a far more moderate guy than the fad before. He was he was more progressive. He was doing the right things. He was he was actually slashing into... He'd worked out a figure of about £10 million a year wastage in contracts in, in Ivers, and I don't mean player contracts. Mm -hmm. And he was eating into that, and he was actually making progress, and he was getting the club towards the position that he wanted it to be in. He was almost there. He was really <laughs> touching distance. And then James Bisgrove went to Saudi Arabia and said, by the way, guys, I've left something in my top drawer. <laughs> no. And it's absolutely shafted him. No. Um, and I, so people will argue, well, he shouldn't have appointed Bisgrove. That's a fair point. People will say, well, he should have been on Bisgrove when this project was, was, was up and running. He should have been monitoring it. But that's what James Bisgrove was paid to do. He was an executive. Mm. Um, and, and the board, as in most companies that I know anywhere throughout the world, they trust the executives who are appointed to carry out the the executive work. Um, so when he found that out, there was no way back. And it, it was, I'm afraid it was always going to end 
badly for, for John Bennett after that because he carried the can. Mm-hmm. He was the guy that was left holding the baby and he took the blame. Right. And and really, I'm not sure it was John Bennett's fault. He, he has made mistakes along the way, but I think he's, I think he's been the victim of betrayal um, and I think he was blindsided by stuff. Um, I, 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 on a human level, I've got real empathy for him because I, I just hope that by taking a step back and, and kind of removing himself from this kind of... Circus. Well, it's just chaos. Isn't <laughs> it? chaos it's, it's, it's a cauldron of chaos. And by removing himself from it, I just hope that health-wise he makes a full, speedy recovery and he gets back to it. And, and, my, and my hope for him is that, see all this stuff we're talking about Dave King, my hope for him is that one day he might be able to look back and say it was worth it because it, it sparked a, a, a fresh start for Rangers. It's not to go back the way to Dave King. It's not to bring back the big Doogie Park. It's not to, you know, have meetings with corporate fans and make big decisions in the in the blue room. It, it, it's, they need a fresh start. They need professional people. And probably they do need to kind of break this cycle of fan ownership. They probably need new input from with an outside view, with a clear head. And and if that's the legacy that John Bennett leaves, if that's the next step, if if, if people come in to invest in this and, and, and pick up the... Um, sort of memory of 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 John Bennett's time in charge, if if uh, if that's the legacy, and I, I hope for John that it is because I think he deserves something good. I I, I don't like the way that he's been treated, vilified, demonised. Um, I feel for the guy. I really do. We uh, I think we had a wee technical thing. I'm sorry about that. But be- Mick, before I bring you in on, on Dave King, I've got a mountain of uh, comments and reaction um, on Rick's sports social media channels. And I should say, get involved in the comment section below. Um, Rangers, easy, okay. Is written in Keith and Keith. I do get what you're saying about Bennett. He is a good man, uh, but he's had two shocking summers. First giving Beale total free reign, uh, and then the stadium shouldn't have let Bizgrove be CEO. Yeah, yeah well, look, that's one thing I said in the column. I, John Bennett's biggest failing is probably the fact that he's a fundamentally decent man and he was willing people to be successful rather than right. being sure that they were going to be successful. He, he, he did throw... <clears throat> his lot at Michael Beale, he believed in Michael Beale and he did similar with, with Bisgrove and, and ultimately those mistakes have, have cost him pretty dearly but you know this this sort of savage way that he was he was being treated towards the end I, I don't think he was deserving of that, I really don't 